Okay, Keyshawn, O.J. Simpson has passed at age 76. He obviously was a huge star football player at your school, USC, back in the day. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, obviously, thoughts and prayers obviously go to his family and kids and things of that nature. Um, you know, you, you have to think about everything in totality and just in his entire career. Phenomenal. Obviously, I didn't get a chance to see him play as a football player, Skip, but I saw highlights and, and I saw, um, you know, interviews and things of that nature, and I've talked to too many people that played around the same time that he played yeah. in the type of back he was and how fierce he was and how big and fast and strong and athletic he was and mm -hmm. just all of those uh, different things throughout his pro football career. I mean, just some of his accolades, obviously he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, he was the most valuable player. He's a five-time pro bowler, five-time first-team all-pro, four rushing titles in, in the 70s, uh, 72, 73, 75, 76. I mean, they went on to, backs were big back then, tall, you know, 200-plus pound guys, mm -hmm. all the way from uh, Jim Brown or to, to down to, like, Marcus Allen. And so it was kind of that mold of, of running back. Mm -hmm. um, and he certainly, obviously, post-career, went on to television in some movies and things of that nature yeah. that and made himself famous from that standpoint. Then, obviously, the other issues seeped in. I mean, you can't obviously have a conversation about O.J. Simpson in his football career without bringing up some of the misfortunate steps that come along, mm -hmm. uh, came along with him post-career. Um, and so, you know, you just, you look at it for now, you say, man, you know, life is short. Because I had no idea that that he was even in a condition to even did not know be it. what we would even mm -hmm. be talking about this today. Um, you know, it's just it, it, it's just you think about it, you say, man, life is short. That's what I can say. Mm. Life is short. I, I'm sure you probably have the luxury of seeing him play. I did not. I had the luxury of seeing him play a lot, and I had the luxury of getting to know him a lot. Mm -hmm. I was around him a lot. Obviously, we all are painfully aware of what he was involved in off the field. It's too horrifying for me to even run back through the literally gory details of mm -hmm. what happened. But I do want to honor him as a football player and as charismatic an athlete as I ever knew, ever knew, including Magic Johnson, who I got to know fairly well. There was nothing like O.J. Simpson. This is pre all the, 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 yes. that we all know about. But you can make a case he was the greatest running back ever. You can make a case he was the greatest college running back ever because if you see the highlights of that run against UCLA <laughs> out here, whoa. It's spectacular. What he did at Buffalo, going over 2,000 yards back in the days of the, what was it, 14 game season, was just spectacular. And his commercials were legendary. This is before your time, but he made Hertz commercials oh, where he was Hertz. running through the, the airports. Hertz, go, go, OJ, go. Remember this? <laughs> What, what a personality he was born with. Mm -hmm. Just electrifying. And he even segued into making movies. In fact, out here when I was working for the LA Times right out of college, they assigned me for a week. I spent a whole week on set with him. He's making a TV movie with Elizabeth Montgomery of Bewitched fame. This is way before your time. I watch Bewitched. Yeah. Okay, so you know the nose and all that. Drinkle, okay. Drinkle, drinkle. So he was called One Take Simpson because he would one take every scene that they shot. He was a pretty good actor. He was in all the Naked Gun series. I don't know if you know any mm -hmm. of those comedies, but, but he was very good. He was a very gifted man in so many ways which is why the shame of this, the horror of this, the, the, the sadness of, of everything that transpired thereafter was incomprehensible to me having been around him as much as I was.
but he came from a rough background, man. He he was South San Francisco. I don't know if you know those neighborhoods, yeah, but it's, 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 it's tough, man. It was a rough background. He went to junior college first and then, then took your path to USC. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I don't want people to forget that in his day, he, he was something. In his day as a football player and as, a, as just a charismatic superstar athlete, he was something. And that is not to discount anything that happened thereafter yeah. because it happened. A absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you know, prior to the, the incidents that took place in the lives of his loss, when you were being recruited to USC, having grown up across the street from there, but, but they still got to recruit you. Yeah. And there's a plan that's put in place. Yeah. And part of that plan is you could be the next if you did it this way. Here's a guy who's the number one overall pick. Here's a guy that went on the television fame, he post did. career. Here's a guy who you went know on what? a movie he, career. He, he was the essence of the USC oh, athlete. No, yeah. it was, it was yeah. if you walk into Heritage Hall at uh, the time, this was the, the, the picture, this was the model. This is what the model of success was supposed to look like as a USC football player. 32. You, you number 32, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be drafted high as a number one pick. You're mm -hmm. supposed to go on and have great success as a football player. Then when your career is over, you're supposed to parlay that into other things off the field. Um, and, and so for the most part, a lot of guys that would go to USC, both defensively and offensively, mm -hmm. that was almost like a model he, he of success, yeah. you know. But un un unfortunately, when you have a O.J. Simpson conversation, you have to have a conversation about the things that took place Absolutely. after his career was over. You know, it, it, it turned into to something that, you know, like you said, Skip, horrible events, <laughs> like horrible. I was at USC at the time. Oh, okay, I was I was at USC at the time, and um, I was headed to Santa Monica to watch the uh, the Houston Knicks championship game. We were going to, to Santa Monica to watch it over somebody's house, mm. and the whole thing just broke out of chaos. You're talking you talking know, about the Bronco chase? The Bronco chase, chase yeah. the whole deal. Yeah. So I, I remember it like it was yesterday because I was at the school. Mm. I was at the university. And it, it shaped so much of that here in Los Angeles shaped so much of what we thought about as a black man, mm. what we thought about O.J. Simpson, mm. okay? And, and what he was to us and what he was not to us, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And, and so in the end, you look at it and you say to yourself, you know, a couple people lost their lives, why they lose them, who knows? I mean, stories go wild and wild for many times over. Um, but it also was at a time where we was dealing with the whole Rodney King stuff, the yeah. riots, all that kind of yeah. culminated together at the same time. So eventually it just, it imploded our city to a whole nother level. I mean, it's it, that time in that era, and I was a, basically, I was a, a freshman, a senior in high school up until my senior year in college where that four to five year time period was so much tension between what O.J. did, allegedly, as they say, and what transpired with the LAPD and Rodney King situation. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was one of those times in, in history I look back at now as a, as a kid growing up and looking at that and saying, I never thought that I would be around and witness, I just never thought that I would be around and witness that and see some of the, the events that occurred at that point in time. And to know, know him, because I knew him, I knew him well. I knew his, <clears throat> I knew his kids. They were the yeah. same age as me. Yep. And I knew him well. I mean, the older ones. Mm -hmm. um, it is just, it's, you know, it's a sad, a sad situation for them, I'm sure, to see their father pass away. But at the same time, you know, you, you look back at everything, and he lived a full life, for sure. He, he lived that. a full life. Al Cowlings? Yeah, I saw, I saw Al this past season at the SC game. Yeah. We were sitting together at an SC game this year. Johnny Cochran, uh -huh. Judge Ito, Marsha Clark. <laughs> yeah, all of them. All of them. And then OJ's very 
complicated relationship with the L.A. black community because yeah. it got complicated, complicated. right? It's very complicated. Yeah. And I don't think just L.A. in general, Maybe. our community in general. Yeah. Um, because he was somebody that, you know, as a, as a black man, you want to stay true to yourself. And then I think all of a sudden his fame kind of pushed him it did. into another direction. I got it. Yeah. You know? So as a black man, as we sit here right now, we just heard it, so you're, you're reacting on the fly with just your emotions. How will you remember O.J. Simpson as a black man? Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I would just remember him mainly as a football player. Yeah. That's really, to be honest with you, Skip, as a dominant football player. And, and I learned a lot about him as a football player sitting next to Tom Jackson at ESPN yeah. for 10 years and, and working alongside him in Countdown. Mm. So he was in that era of the 70s and the 60s in football. So he could tell me all about what type of player he was. And then I, I knew because of highlights and things and records and stuff like that. I just know him as a football player, mm. you know, and, and, a, and an actor and, and a guy who you saw on commercials running through the airport and hurts. So you look at that, I look at that side of it, the dark side, I can't, I can't rock with the dark side, you know, because when I look at that, I don't have enough information to really say what he was and what he wasn't, other than the only things he showed me, yeah. which was, yeah, you're really not trying to be black right now. That's really it, you know? That's really it. And, really and so it. at that point, it's like, well, I can't really... You know, you don't know who you are, and you're not true to yourself. I, I, I can't roll like that. Hmm. And that's the reality of it. Well said. OJ, gone at 76.